Ice Tea with Fit Pro talking about lower body warm ups today. Okay, so if you haven't watched my upper body warm up video, please go ahead and check that. Uh, but if you've already watched that and now you're on to the lower body warm up video, all of the same points for me. Right, so number one, every day is different, meaning that you might need a little more glutes on day one, a little more hamstrings on day two, and be ready for that, right? Be ready to change your routine or go deeper or longer on certain stretches, depending on what you need, okay? Number two, you can customize all of these, okay, right? So if you wanna twist a little bit more into a certain stretch, or you wanna go the opposite way, or you wanna go a little bit deeper, or you wanna pick one leg off the ground, whatever you need to do, you wanna take your time and really explore what your system needs with these stretches especially, okay? So every day is different, every client is different, and you might wanna explore different angles, what works for you, okay? Hold each one of these for about 30 seconds or more if they're really problematic, and then repeat if you need to, okay? And lastly, don't fight any of these, okay? If you're tensing up and you're bracing against any one of these stretches, you're making it so much harder on yourself and you're not getting the point that you need, okay? So make sure you're not tensing, make sure that you're relaxing and breathing and allowing yourself to really receive the stretch, okay? So let's talk about lower body, all right? I usually start with the same tabletop position, right? And I'll roll in some of my upper body warm up into my lower body warm up. They don't have to be separate, okay? So, but if I'm warming up total body, I'll go right from this tabletop position that I was in for upper body, okay? So again, coming back down here. All right, so you can play with, first of all, where your feet are, okay? You can play with feet being closer and sticking your butt out a little bit more like this. That's gonna give you a little bit more hamstrings, okay? Or you can play with here, maybe coming in like this, getting a little bit more low back, okay? So those are just two examples of how you can customize all of these stretches, okay? And there are gonna be things that I haven't even included in my video as an example. As long as you're working from the base position and you're being aware of what things feel like, there's no wrong way to do this, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, so here's your basic tabletop stretches. I call these ballet stretches. I think real ballerinas uh, probably would laugh that I call these ballet stretches, but that's what it looks like to me and that's what I do. Okay, so it starts like this, tabletop. Now you're gonna come up on one foot, kick the other heel back up towards the ceiling, like this. Okay, and you might feel that in your planting hamstring or in your raising glute for sure, maybe low back. You can twist and stack the hips on top if you feel like you need to, okay? So here's more examples. So you can come up like this, really stretch. If you want more of a quad stretch, more of a yoga type incorporation, you can come back, keep your left hand on the box, come back and grab this quad, this, this foot, and kick that, kick that right foot up towards the sky like that that's gonna really open up adductors and hips and quads and low back. So that's a variation there. Um, you can also, when you're kicked back like this, sometimes I'll take my same hand, so left foot's on the ground, left hand comes down, and I might reach for the ground like this. And I'll work on maybe lightening up on my right hand and balancing entirely on my left foot, okay? And that's a way to really load that planting hamstring and to really explore tension that might be in hamstrings. Everybody has tight hamstrings that I know, okay? So, there's your basic tabletop. Of course, you wanna hold each one of those for 30 seconds plus, okay? Relax into it and do the same on the other side, okay? So those are all your ballet stretches, all right? So next, from this position, what I'll do is I'll go into calf stretches, okay? So all you do is plant your heel on the ground. If your heel's coming up, and it's not correct, you're missing the calf, okay? So keep the heels on the ground and just lean into it. And you'll feel that through your calves, okay? You can go one leg at a time, like this. You can move your hips different angles, side to side, forward a little bit more to get different angles and hit different parts of the calves, okay? But everybody's got tight calves that I know too. Nobody stretches them, okay? So take your time exploring each calf. You can go bilateral both at the same time or one at a time. Okay, so we've got glutes and hamstrings and calves, okay? Um, let's see, from here now, all right, so we're done with that position. You can do other things here, right? You can come up like this, this is a good one, right? Classic hamstring stretch. 
uh, keeping the knee in a soft lock. Everybody knows these mechanics, but just to review, keeping the knee in a soft lock, lower the chest towards the knee, and you can grab for a little bit more leverage and relax and melt into it. Don't fight it, okay? You can do both of those there. So then usually what I'll do is I'll go into a wide stretch like this, right? Pretty wide, and you're just gonna come down towards the ground. So come over to the side, videographer. I think you'll see it best over here. So come down to the, to the ground like this. If you can get both hands on the ground, try to get both forearms on the ground. Then try to get your forehead on the ground, right? And try to relax into it and just let your body move the way that it wants. From here, I might hold that for a little while or I might go side to side, right? I might go forehead towards knee and grab and stretch like this. So I reach around with the opposite hand and grab the outside of the foot to get a little bit more pull. Right, and I might come down like this and hold that one for a little while and other side and vice versa, all right? Another good one from this position is coming down like this, all right? All the way down into a side lunge. This heel stays planted, okay? And this leg stays straight, pretty weightless. Right? I can lift that leg off the ground if I needed to. Okay. From here you can dive into this glute. And this is also going to stretch this adductor. Right? You can hold this position and of course you can switch and hit the other one. If you come down towards the ground, there's a lot of possibilities here. So take your time to explore this movement. Alright, now next, this is probably my favorite of all this lower body series. Okay, I call this runner stretch. This is something that I do seven days a week. And whenever I get a client in the gym who says, I just feel tight, I feel like my squats are tight, I feel like my hips are tight, everybody says that, the runner's stretch is one of the best, okay? So what you're gonna do, I'll face towards the camera so you can see. So my feet are hip width apart, okay? And I'm gonna create a little bit more distance, like a long lunge here, okay? Got a long lunge position. This long lunge is gonna stretch these hip flexors, these quads here, and this low back on the other side, okay? Now what you're gonna do, keeping this heel grounded at all times, you're gonna to try to drop down straight towards the ground. If you can do that, you're gonna feel that in this glute. All right, so it looks like this. Right? And you'll hold that position. A lot of people have to kind of twist. You wanna work on getting towards the midline. Okay. Now there's so many possibilities here, okay? So really make sure that you explore all the different angles that you can do here in a runner stretch. So I'll come straight down. I might also drop in and look back over and see my foot. That's gonna drop in this hip a little bit more to hit psoas, iliacus, and some of these more hard to reach muscles, okay? So left foot is planted, right hand is planted. I might dip down like this and look back over my back foot, okay? And I might hold that for a while. You can also go the other way. You can open up towards the other side, right? And come down. And that's gonna hit adductors back here. And that's gonna hit quads on this side, okay? So, so many options here in runner's stretch. You wanna make sure that you find all the tight points and figure out how to relax them. One more that I'll throw in here. Um, this is something that I really need to work on, okay? Because I'm always flexed here, my midsection is always really tight. So in this position, what I'll do, I'll take my left hand, rest it on here, take my other hand and kind of reach up towards the ceiling like this and try to arch backwards. And I feel a huge stretch through midsection and hip flexors and mid back on the back side. Try to hold that one for 30 seconds and breathe. That one is brutal, okay? But that'll open up everything on the front line, which never gets stretched, okay? Similar to a bridge in yoga. So make sure that you explore all the possibilities of runner stretch. That will keep your hips like magic, okay? During Ironman, that was one of my key routines every day, seven days a week, to keep things functional and open and loose, right? So. Okay, once you've gone through all those, you should be almost ready to go. And then I recommend a dynamic warm-up, okay? 
if you're lifting weights, don't warm up with cardio. It's like, <laughs> if you're gonna run a marathon, you're not gonna warm up with squats, right? So why warm up for squats and running? It makes no sense, so stop doing it, okay? Warm up with all this stuff and then go into dynamic movements like RDLs. 10 of these, up, holds, 10 of these, right? And then overhead squats, something like this. Maybe 10 of those, maybe 10 lunges as well. Warm up for lifting with lifting type movements. All right? That's the best way to make sure that you're getting the benefits out of the warm up, staying loose, preventing injuries, right? All the things that the warm up is supposed to do. All right? So I recommend doing all of these, this whole series, at least a couple of times a week for all athletes. And that includes recreational gym goers, okay? If you're more of a regular cardio athlete, if you're an Ironman triathlete, I mean, this is seven days a week to keep your hips like magic, all right? Invest the time to feel this out, feel what works for you, and make sure that you're giving each one of these poses, each one of these tasks enough room to explore, okay? Enjoy.